date of your book. Uh, the first question asks you, trace in general terms the path of energy from the sun uh, to the contraction of a muscle in a predator such as a mountain lion. And I've mentioned before, I like that question. This is the kind of thing that I would ask you to do. And so for a question like that one, I would be looking for something like this. Uh, now, I am not an excellent artist, so I have a tendency not to draw pictures if I can avoid it. Uh, and so I like to draw flowcharts with words in them because I can write words. And so I would have done something like this. The sun gets absorbed by a chloroplast. This is where photosynthesis occurs. And up until this point, we haven't talked about the details of what that entails. But I do know that a chloroplast makes oxygen and glucose. Uh, and so one thing that I want you to recognize is that energy has to be somewhere. It starts off as solar energy, and then the chloroplast converts that solar energy into chemical energy, so those two products there. So I'm just going to put a little note here. Now the energy is chemical. Now I have to somehow indicate that the organism is going to eat or consume or breathe in this oxygen. Uh, and so I like to indicate that there's some kind of a consumer that's going to consume them. In this particular question, we were talking about a mountain lion. Now, if you want it to be true to the world, it's probably not likely that the mountain lion got it directly from the plant. Uh, it's probably a little more likely that, you know, something like a deer ate it and then the mountain lion ate the deer. Uh, and so when we get later on to this section where we're talking about food chains, I would want you to be a little more specific than that. Uh, but it's possible mountain lions can eat plants. They, they're not limited to only eating animals. And then in this mountain lion, there's going to be a mitochondria somewhere. Now remember, one of them is called a mitochondrion. A whole bunch of them is called a mitochondria. Uh, I don't have the tendency to take off marks for spelling, but just so that you know, that's what that means. Uh, and this is where cell respiration is going to happen. That is where I'm going to get my ATP and that's what's going to my muscle. So that's the kind of pathway I would be looking for. Uh, notice how I didn't leave anything out. I could trace that little bit of energy and follow it all the way through that path. If you had left out one of those steps, for example, if you just said mitochondrion then muscle, I would say what? What went from the mitochondrion to the muscle? Well, it was that molecule of ATP that got made. So that's the kind of thing that I would be looking for. You don't have to have drawn it like a flow chart. I noticed a lot of people made pictures when they did this. Uh, if you prefer to write little points or sentences, by all means, do it however you feel the most comfortable representing it. As long as this type of information is there, that's what I would be looking for. Uh, now, a few of the other questions on here, uh, I think were a little more straightforward. Uh, so I didn't necessarily have anything to say about number two or number three, unless somebody has a big question that they want to ask. I put number two on there because you have to know what the word autotroph means. An autotroph is something that makes its own food. Auto means on its own, troph refers to getting your energy. And I really wanted to make sure that that vocabulary word was there. Uh, in number three, it's asking you about photosynthesis versus cell respiration. So I like to draw a line here and just sort of point some things out. In photosynthesis, I'm absorbing energy. In cell respiration, I'm producing it. Uh, only autotrophs can do photosynthesis. Uh, the things that do cell respiration could be heterotrophs or autotrophs. So don't forget, plants and animals can do cell respiration. A lot of time people have the tendency to say it's only animals. Uh, when do they happen could be another thing. So remember, photosynthesis requires the sun. Cell respiration doesn't, so it could happen while the sun is out or while the sun is not out. Those are generally the things that I like to compare. 
The other thing that you should really be aware of is, for example, oxygen and glucose are the products of photosynthesis, but they are the reactants for cell respiration. Uh, water and CO2 are the products of cell respiration and the reactants uh, for photosynthesis. That's the type of thing that I would want you to be able to compare. Uh, now, number four is about ATP. And it asks, why is ATP the energy currency of the cell? So I just want to remind you what ATP looks like. Uh, if you'll recall, I said that the part of ATP that interests us the most is those three phosphates that are added on. The rest of it, which we'll call adenosine, so that's ribose and adenine put together. The rest of it is there. I would never need you to memorize the exact structure. Uh, but you need to be aware that these are high energy bonds. And when I remove one of them, then I'm releasing some energy that's available for cells to use. Uh, so that answers uh, number four and number five, talking about what ATP does and what it looks like. Uh, does anyone have any questions up till there that they want to ask? Uh, so the number six is asking about the ATP energy cycle. Uh, and so there was a picture in your textbook, and I put the same picture up on the screen. The idea was that I can go between ATP and ADP. And doing that makes a little cycle. When I go from ATP to ADP, I release or produce energy that's available. When I go from ADP back to ATP, I need energy input, either from the sun or from cell respiration, to make that happen. Uh, the next question is number seven. And it's asking you, for a chloroplast, which basically looks like this. Uh, what are the pieces that you see? Uh, so if we look at A, A is pointing to the stroma. It's just sort of the space that's inside of the chloroplast. Uh, B is pointing to just the membrane. C is pointing to a thylakoid. And D is pointing to the big stack. That's the granum, singular, or plural would be grana. Uh, so those are the words that you need to recognize in terms of the structure of a chloroplast. Uh, it also asks to describe what happens in B and in C. Uh, so since B is the membrane, that is how things get in and out of the chloroplast. Uh, since C is the thylakoid, uh, we'll see that <clears throat> uh, that's where the chlorophyll is. That's where sun is getting absorbed. Uh, now, number eight asks you to identify the part of a mitochondrion that performs a function related to the process that occurs in the stroma. So that's actually a pretty, pretty detailed question. Uh, and to do that, you really had to read in your textbook about what was happening in each of those spots. And we'll go over this in quite a bit of detail. So if you felt like this question was hard, it was uh, as a beginning question. But we're going to talk about these processes quite a bit. Uh, in the stroma, this is the part where CO2 becomes a carbohydrate. And what we'll see is that CO2 becoming a carbohydrate is a process of reduction. We're going to add electrons and hydrogen to it. So CO2 has no hydrogen. For it to become a carbohydrate, I have to add some. Uh, Reduction, even though it sounds like I'm taking things away, actually means that I'm adding things. So if you remember in your notes, uh, reduction is gain, oxidation is loss. So in the uh, chloroplast, this is where reduction happens. So I need to ask myself, where does reduction happen or where does something similar happen in the mitochondria? Now in the mitochondria, which we'll do right here, uh, the places that are of importance to us are the inside, which is the matrix, and this little wavy line, which is the cristae. 
Uh, and so we're asking ourselves what happens in each of those spots. Is it oxidation? Is it reduction? Uh, so if we sort of ask ourselves when these occur, you could actually say both of them because oxidation and reduction always have to happen at the same time. Uh, for something to be reduced, something else has to be oxidized. Since we were talking about uh, CO2 becoming carbohydrate, I'll focus on the part where a carbohydrate turns back into CO2. And so we would want to pick the matrix. Uh, but we will come back to this type of question once we've really talked about each of the steps of photosynthesis and cell respiration. Uh, the last thing is number 10, reducing power. So I'm just going to add something down here. Something like NADPH has reducing power. It is a reduced molecule because it has that extra H added onto it. It could cause something else to be reduced. NADP positive, which is the oxidized form, does not have reducing power. It could not cause something else to be reduced. So reducing power means you have, in our case, a hydrogen to give away. You could reduce something else. All right. So this is lesson seven. Uh, and the title of this one is, How Does Light Turn Into My Dinner? So we are really going to focus on light. Now we know that photosynthesis requires light. Uh, and what you'll see today is it's actually only part of photosynthesis that requires light. The other part doesn't actually need it, but it can't happen without the part and the light happening first. So today we're going to focus on just the part of photosynthesis where light is actually required. So the first thing that we're going to do is sort of an overview of what happens where in photosynthesis. So one of the things that you absolutely, absolutely have to know is you have to know what the reaction for photosynthesis is. Am I going to ask you to write the whole thing from scratch? Probably not. But I would ask you to recognize, for example, what goes on the left and what goes on the right. For those of you who have not taken or are not going to take chemistry, these are called reactants. And these are called products. And it's really important that you can use those two terms properly. So one of the things that we mentioned way back in the beginning was that the things that were the products of photosynthesis are the reactants for cell respiration. And I would ask a question that uses those two vocabulary words. I'm going to point something out here. Uh, now, the first part is that CO2 is a gas. That's not really a big shocker. I am pointing out that water is a liquid. Uh, people have a tendency, I don't know why, to think that water is a gas here. Um, I'll ask you, do plants operate well at 100 or higher degrees Celsius? The answer is no, they do not. Uh, plants need liquid water for photosynthesis to happen. It's true that water could evaporate out of a plant, out of its leaves. Uh, but for the plant to perform photosynthesis, it's using liquid water. The other thing that I'm going to point out is this thing right here. Energy is required for photosynthesis to happen. The word that we could use for that is endothermic. Endothermic means that energy was absorbed for the reaction to happen. Now, just in case you're like, I'm not taking chemistry, I don't care, uh, I'll say, well, you need to know it for this class. And if you are taking chemistry, in Chem 30, I'll tell you, in that first unit, if you understand photosynthesis and cell respiration, you will be ahead of the game. Now, on the product side, C6H12O6 is glucose. It's a solid. 
And then, of course, O2 is oxygen, which is a gas. So it would be important to me that you recognize what are the reactants, what are the products, what state is everything in. That might be something that I would ask you about. Uh, the other thing that I put here in blue uh, is that photosynthesis evolved in prokaryotic organisms first. So I'm just going to mention this word. Some of you might be aware, perhaps some of you didn't spend as much time on this in Science 10, uh, that there is not only one type of cell. We have a tendency to focus on eukaryotic cells. So those are the types that have all of the organelles. Prokaryotic cells don't necessarily have all of the organelles, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus. Uh, lots of bacteria are prokaryotic cells, uh, but they can still perform photosynthesis. Uh, and so later on, really at the end of the course when we talk about evolution, we'll talk about uh, a couple of theories on how a chloroplast actually came to be or where a plant cell came from that involve this idea. But prokaryotic organisms can perform photosynthesis. So don't think that it's only a plant that can do this. Any organism that we would consider an autotroph is making its own food, uh, and in virtually all cases, they're doing it through photosynthesis. Now, in photosynthesis, there are two reactions. There is one that we will call the light-dependent reaction. What does that mean? This reaction depends on light. If light is not available, this part can't happen. This is the part of the reaction that produces oxygen. Now, it also produces some other molecules, NADPH and ATP. And those are used in the light independent reaction. Now, independent means I don't need you. So in the light independent reaction, light is not actually required. But since I need those two molecules, NADPH and ATP, I can't actually do this step if the light dependent step hasn't happened first. In the light independent step, that's where we make glucose. So if I were to take my overall photosynthesis reaction and categorize things, in the light dependent reaction, I get oxygen and I'm getting it from water. So in the light dependent reaction, water and oxygen are the two pieces that are important. And so is the solar energy. That's where the sun is necessary because I'm depending on light. In the light independent reaction, that's where CO2 and glucose go. So photosynthesis is not actually one simple reaction. It's actually a whole bunch of little reactions. And when we write uh, the reaction for photosynthesis, we're actually writing the summary of a whole bunch of things that are happening. So down here on the bottom, I have a picture of a chloroplast, which summarizes exactly what I wrote up here. I'm showing you, first of all, that the light-dependent reaction happens in the grana, or the thylakoid membranes. And it's showing here that H2O goes in and oxygen comes out. Now, the other reaction, in my little bit of writing, it says light-independent. And down here, it's called the dark reaction. That's another term that's used to describe it. And I'll show you all of the different words we could use to describe each step. But in the light independent or the dark reaction, we'll see that CO2 goes in and glucose comes out. And that that dark reaction is happening not on the thylakoid membranes, it's happening on the space, so that's the stroma. 
So this is showing you overall where everything is happening and what the basic reactants and products are for each step. So our goal is going to be to talk about just the light reaction for now, uh, and then tomorrow we'll talk about just the dark reaction. Uh, does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask up to here? Uh, so there are a bunch of steps here. Uh, and before we go through all of these steps, we're actually going to do a little something together. Uh, so of all of that, of all the stuff that you saw in that little animation, these are the things that I really need you to be aware of. These are the steps that I would ask you to recognize. <coughs> so first, light is absorbed by chlorophyll. Now there's a couple of different kinds of chlorophyll molecules. There's chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. First, it's chlorophyll A that's absorbing it. Chlorophyll is a pigment. Pigments are the things that give color. So you have pigments. You have a pigment called melanin that gives your skin and your eyes a color. So chlorophyll is simply a pigment. We know from previous lessons uh, that chlorophyll does not absorb green light. It absorbs the other colors. Now chlorophyll is never all alone. It's always found in a cluster. So a photosystem is a whole bunch of chlorophyll molecules together, working together. And so what we saw is that when light, in the case of that animation they were calling it a photon of light, strikes chlorophyll, electrons were released. We could use the word excited. Uh, what that really means is now they have some energy, they could move, not they became uh, excited in their personality, because of course they don't have one. Now the third step that happens uh, is that electrons are absorbed by chlorophyll B. Now chlorophyll B, this is photosystem 2, this is photosystem 1. And if you look at this, we're glossing over a lot of the detailed names of molecules because we want to focus on the process that's happening. When light strikes chlorophyll molecules, electrons are excited. These electrons start moving around, and as they do this, a bunch of things happen. One of the things that eventually happens is that I get to make ATP. So I'm going to remind you that last week, not last week, the week before when we actually had school, uh, the last thing in Lesson 6 was a slide about chemiosmosis. Uh, that was the last part of the animation that we just saw again. That's where hydrogen ions were moving, and as they did, ADP and phosphate were joining together. Now that's sort of the long-term goal uh, of all of this, is that we're going to make some ATP. Now what happens to the original chlorophyll molecules? Well, they lost some electrons. Light hit them. Electrons left. Two electrons, to be specific. So those original chlorophyll molecules remove electrons from water. So that's, why, that's one of the reasons that water is necessary. It is the source of electrons to replace the ones that were lost. So to get those electrons, water has to be split up. We know what happens to the electrons. They're going to replace the ones that were lost. So we also need to mention what happens to the rest of the water. That means oxygen and hydrogen protons, so hydrogen ions. Oxygen diffuses out of the cell and is released through the stomata. So by oxygen, we mean O2 gas. So this is the spot where 
oxygen is being produced in a plant. And eventually, those hydrogens are added to NADP to form NADPH.